before I dig into this song and how I create it, I'm going to quickly show you the organization of this and why I have all these different colors. So when, cause I mix myself in Studio One, um, I sum out seven buses. I would have eight if I had a vocal, but since there's no vocal in this track, I have seven. Um, I sum out those seven buses through my two bus plus summing mixer, and then I go through an analog mix bus and then come back into the computer, and I have those all color coded and grouped as seven buses. So to make it easier my, on myself for um, in production, I like to keep um, my my seven groups just as if it were mixing all color coded the same and also I like everything to be all neat and organized I'm really OCD about stuff like that so um, let me explain what some of these mean so obviously um, here's my MIDI it's all white I've got it all organized in the same order as these groups that I'm about to show you um, so the first group is the high high synths which are I have them green and that's basically high synths are our, um, lead sounds pluck sounds sequences anything like that um, these blue right here these are low synths which are pads drones okay and then um, purple that's bass and then effects, I color those pink like candy because they're like the extra stuff in the tracks that can really make your tracks sweet and interesting. Um, kicks are red. Low percussion, which are snares, claps, those are orange. And then finally we have high percussion, which is yellow, and that's basically ride, shakers, hats. Um, tambourines, basically everything in the um, the high frequency um, range of the frequency spectrum, that's a high percussion. So once again, my seven groups in this case are, I've got high synths, low synths, bass, effects, kick, low percussion, and high percussion. And so I just organize all my tracks the same way. And so, and especially it helps if you've got big sessions like this, it helps you to be able to work easier without, you know, ideas being scattered around and that just gets really annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to recreate the melody of this song, which I'm about to play again for you, um, by scratch. And I'm going to write it with MIDI um, and pretend that I've never written this song in my life. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solo the, the melody for you to hear. It's just this pluck sequence right here. So that's the melody I'm going to re be remaking. Um, so right now I'm going to pretend that I have never seen this track in my life. I'm just opening a brand new fresh session in Ableton. Um, I'm going to pretend that none of this is here, that I've never created anything. And I'm going to start by doing that by um, just right clicking and inserting a MIDI track. And then I'm going to go ahead and name this main because it's MIDI. I'm going to... Ah and put it white because it's MIDI. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw out a, an eight bar sequence. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. Okay, so before I start writing the melody, there's a few things I need to do. So I need to set up this MIDI track. So how I do that is just as if you were using like a soft synth or something like Ableton's Analog or Massive, you take this thing called External Instrument and then plop that right down on your MIDI track, just as if you were to have a soft synth. And then you're gonna go down here and see that you have a MIDI to and an audio from. So how do we configure that? So like I was saying earlier, I have a MIDI Motu MIDI Express MIDI converter and I have it configured right here. I've got my outputs configured. There's eight MIDI outputs. And so it's separate from my audio interface. And I'm gonna go up here in live preferences. And then I'm gonna go to MIDI. And then I'm gonna go down here. 
And as you see right here, I've got my eight outputs from my MIDI Motu interface. So your, your MIDI interface might have two, three, four different outputs. In my case, mine has eight. So as you see, they're called ports in this case. So in order to hear your MIDI, make sure that you have all eight or as how many outputs as you have that these are track on, that you select track on on all your MIDI outputs. So those are good. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna solve this, and then I'm gonna go up here, and now we see that these eight MIDI outputs are configured. So I know for a fact that my Mother32 is outputting MIDI at, as it's, the output is going to be on port six. I know for that fact, so I'm gonna select port six, and then also make sure to keep this on channel one. And then also, I know that it's coming, that audio is coming from this Mother32 on channel one of my audio interface. So now I'm going to go ahead and before we start writing this, one more thing you have to do is go ahead and turn on audio monitoring. If you're inputting notes with a mouse, as opposed to with the keyboard, make sure to have this on. And then I'm gonna start there. And then what I'm gonna do first to ensure that this um, Mother32 is working, because, um, all right, so I'm just gonna draw out some random notes right here and then watch to see if this Mother32 is um, receiving MIDI, you'll see this light right here start um, blinking red. This LED will start blinking red in the same rhythm as the notes that I'm playing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start playing this little loop here. It's just random notes. And now we see that this light right here is lighting up red. So we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and recreate this melody from scratch. Um, and usually how I re um, write sequences is I go ahead and I draw out, I'm just going to solo the kick here, um, instead of the metronome, I like to use the kick, um, a kick instead, so I'll just draw out like a simple kick four in the floor line all across and then just so I can feel the groove and get inspired for syncopation in this sequence, so I'm going to go ahead and solo the kick and then let me go back to my sequence. And then I'll start writing. Okay. some notes around and keys and stuff like that. So what I want to do is I want to um, put this note up a little bit, just going by my ears. So to signify to the listener that a change is about to occur. So let's hear what this sounds like. So already it made the loop less monotonous. It can also be a, like a start for a track right there. on copying this. This time, I want to drop these notes down and see what happens. Now it should sound like this. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I'm going to keep going.
um, as I'm about to add my last notes here at this eight, this sequence. Um, one last thing to make sure is that since music and sequences are basically cycles, make sure that um, as you're writing your last bar or last phrase that it resolves back to the beginning, meaning that it sounds like it flows um, from the beginning to the end seamlessly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy these notes one more time. And then... Uh, all right bring this one up too okay so now I'm gonna play that sequence what it sounds like okay So that's pretty much um, just a really quick, um, short little eight bar phrase. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy this, extend this out. I'm gonna make it to a 16 bar phrase. And this time I want these notes right here to be slightly different from the third measure back there. So what I wanna do here is um, actually make this from minor to major. Ah, wrong one. Sorry, my bad. Okay, so this is what's gonna sound like. This is the old one. And this is the new one. So it's slightly different from the original that um, it just brings some interest to your lines as well, because this this sequence, this particular one goes from minor to major. And so um, 